Canada's back? Not quite. Hi, I'm Brian Lilly, political columnist with the Toronto Sun. Je Justin Trudeau was elected, promising to put Canada back on the world stage. Now, the truth is, Canada never left. Uh, despite all his claims about Stephen Harper, the Harper government participated in multilateralism. They just didn't do it at the UN. They were all about the G20, the G8, then kicking Russia out, making it the G7. Under Trudeau, though, he made a lot of promises, even about the UN, even about bringing back peacekeeping. He hasn't delivered on any of those. But you know what he has done? He's alienated country after country. Joining me to talk about this fellow columnist at the Toronto Sun, Warren Kinsella. Warren, we've got uh, bad relations now with China, which I'm not horribly upset about, but you know, he, Justin Trudeau and his foreign minister, Melanie Jolie, have handled them badly. We are alienated from India, the biggest democracy in the world and the counterweight to China in the Indo-Pacific. We are not really on good terms with Washington. We're an afterthought with the Biden administration. And now Justin Trudeau ruining relations with Israel when they need friends during their time of war. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't have predicted that it would be this bad. You know, I've been a, a critic of Trudeau a long time. I never could have said he would mess it up this badly. I think, you know, I'm no psychologist, as you know, but, you know, trying to figure out how has he alienated the world? Because he has, whether it's Israel this week or the United States and Britain and France and our allies in the G7 previously, they don't invite us to any of the, the meetings at the big kids table anymore. What's going on? And like, I thought a very revealing moment came on Trudeau's way to, so he left Vancouver where he had was driven out of a restaurant by protest. And he goes to California to meet with Gavin Newsom. And Gavin Newsom is a big deal in the Democratic Party. As you know, I've campaigned for them in the past. And they sit down for the, you know, the obligatory photo. And Newsom looks over. Newsom's probably going to be president of the United States one day, is my view. He looks over at Trudeau at Trudeau's socks and he goes, don't you ever wear black socks? Like, you know, and it was kind of a joke, but it, it also said something. And I winced when I read it. It's, you know, this Instagram prime minister that we've got in Canada. I think that approach he took in the country, he tries to do internationally. And, you know, international leaders from, you know, Biden to Netanyahu, just don't take him seriously. And he has hurt Canada's position in the world. You know, the position that we had, you know, Harper with uh, how he approached international affairs, Chrétien with Team Canada, Pearson with the Suez crisis. Like we, you know, we, we kind of punched above our weight. Well, no you know, something that people don't remember during the 2008, 2009 financial crisis, we're transitioning from uh, President Bush to President Obama in Washington. That's happening as everything's imploding. And the G20 suddenly became a major organization. It wasn't going to be the UN that helped countries guide economies. It was going to be the major economic powerhouses. And even though Canada is a small player in that, Stephen Harper, Jim Flaherty, who was then finance minister, and Mark Carney, who was then the Bank of Canada governor, all chaired committees set up by the G20. They looked to Canada for leadership, to chair committees on, okay, what's our way back on this? No one would turn to, to Justin Trudeau and Christia Freeland and Tiff Macklem and say, hey, you guys help us out. We're in crisis. That would not happen now. No. And like, as you know, I used to work for Chrétien. And, you know, I said to Chrétien after he was prime minister, <clears throat> like, how did you get those guys to listen to us? Because, you know, we're not a military power, not a strategic or diplomatic power. And he said, you know, Canada is, uh, a, it has to have a voice that is respected. So, you know, George W. Bush <clears throat> loved Kretschia because he, Kretschia would say things that Bush couldn't. Uh, and, and same with Clinton and, and same with all the, the European leaders. And, you know, that's what we do well. Or that's what we used to do well. And this guy, you know, he's the Sox guy. It's like Gavin Newsom said, you know, like, don't you? It was just the message was, aren't you guys serious anymore? It doesn't feel like we are. 
do we, can we recover from this? I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, polls right now would suggest that Pierre Polyev government, he's never been tested on international affairs, but neither was Stephen Harper, and he performed quite well. Um, could be him. It could be the liberals change leaders and, you know, stay in power. It, can Canada repair this, though, and, and get a reputation back so that we are taken seriously. I, I believe so. I think there's three things that we can do. Number one, we have a coherent foreign policy. Uh, presently, it's led by a child, Melanie Jolie. She's a joke. She's not serious. She's possibly the worst foreign affairs minister we've ever had. So uh, have a coherent policy there. Number two, uh, start contributing to uh, our defense because the world has become an increasingly dangerous place. Mm -hmm. We need to do that. We haven't done that not just under, under Trudeau, but many prime ministers, that needs to change to show the world and NATO that we're serious. And number three, we need to get rid of Justin Trudeau. There'll be no change in the perspective the whole world has on us until Trudeau's gone. Trudeau needs to go. He was the progressive savior. He was the one that everyone wanted on the front cover of the glossy magazine. And now we all just wish that's where he would go and stay. Yep. Let us know what you think. Drop a comment down below. Share this on social media and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.